This is a super duper special episode of the People Stank Podcast because we are relaunching da -da 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 -da, the interview series. You probably already knew that from the title, but anyway, <laughs> we're relaunching our interviews. We are going to be interviewing and releasing interviews with lots of amazing folks in the tech space and the leadership space and the intersection between that and the career space and just so much fun stuff. You are going to love it. And for the launch party, <laughs> the relaunch party, really, because for those of you who have been following us for a while, or if you want to check out some of the super early episodes, we did have an interview series way back in the beginning, and then we hit a long pause on it, and now we're back. And so what better way to kick off the relaunch of our interview series than by talking with our friend, someone who we really, really admire, Michael Lopp. So I actually interviewed Michael Lopp way back in episode 34, uh, which was years ago at this point. Um, and so what we did this time is Rob interviewed Michael and they talked about so many different things. Michael Lopp is Senior Director of Engineering at Apple. He has, there's almost too many Silicon Valley staples to list in terms of his really, really wonderful, amazing career in tech. He worked at Netscape back in the day. He worked at Pinterest. He worked at Slack. He's currently at Apple. He really is one of the pioneers in talking about leadership in the tech space. No one else was, and he was like, look, no one's talking about this, and it's kind of annoying to me, so I'm gonna start talking about leadership and management in the tech space. And so he's one of Rob's earlier, earliest, really, mentors in um, the tech leadership space. So a lot of the strategies and systems and principles and ideas that Michael Lopp talks about really do form the foundation for a lot of our systems and strategies um, at here at the People Stack. So we are, are forever grateful um, to Michael for that. He goes online by Rands in Repose, R-A-N-D-S, uh, um, in case you wanted to find some of his writing online. He's an amazing writer. And really, please take this podcast as like, a masterclass in tech leadership best practices and a whole bunch of other fun goodies as well. So yes, they talk about tactics and strategies around technical leadership, like getting humans to communicate better, which is Michael Lopp's bread and butter. Yes, they talk about dream jobs and how many dream jobs he's had and um, how he created them. Um, they also talked about the RANS Leadership Slack, which is an online Slack community that Michael Lopp created. Um, and after hearing about it, you just might want to join, and he explains how to do that in the podcast. Um, Michael also admits and talks about, very candidly, about how he's deeply terrified of becoming irrelevant, and that was one of his major motivations for succeeding and, and building his dream in tech. Uh, they talk about the pro leisure circuits, his future writing projects, and also why he wanted to title this episode, Stimulus Driven Creatures. <laughs> so please, without further ado, enjoy this deeply insightful, deeply fun conversation between my husband, my co-CEO co here at the People Stack, Rob Allen, and the one, the only, Michael Lopp. Enjoy. And so I'm here with Michael Lopp, who I was first introduced in the early aughts as Rands and Repose. And you were one of the first people that I saw that I was connected with that was actively talking about what it meant to be leadership in mm -hmm. tech. Mm -hmm. So we had the back in the day, so this is 2005, 2006 timeframe 
we had Coding Horror, we had Joel on Software, and we had Rands. Right. And you know there were other people who had um, had other things that were more tech focused. Steve Yegi, uh, yep. a whole bunch of folks that were talking about the actual tech bit, but not a lot of people were talking about what it meant to glom together a bunch of people, mm. congeal them into a team, mm. and have that team do things that were outsized for what individuals in their garage could just take care of on a weekend. Yep. And so. When you were first starting to recognize what it meant to be leadership, what it meant to you know have that capital L, not just be the the guy who had a manager title, but also what it meant to be responsible for the care and feeding of the team, what was that transition like for you? Yeah, well, I didn't call it leadership at the beginning. I called it management, and um, it's funny because my son's now in industry as well, and I'm I'm, I'm listening to him going like. Wow, he's pretty cranky about all this stuff. Like, oh, he's got a boss for the first time. Oh, he's pretty mad about that. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, son, Lop Jr. I'm like, chill, chill, chill out, man. <laughs> um, but I, I was, I have realized watching him kind of go through it years and years later that it, it came from a couple of the, the transformation from like observing it to talking about it came from two spots. Um, number one was sort of deep dissatisfaction with how people were doing it. <laughs> Going like, this is just like, this is just doesn't even make sense. This is, this is bad judgment, or this is just busyness, or this is just like, you know, like you're not even thinking about it, the other person here. So like deep disfat dissatisfaction with it um, combined with um uh, I was just got really lucky in that there was a lot of mediums that were showing up at the time that made it really just trivial to kind of, you know, kind of get your, get your voice out there. So I was blogging long before Rands and Repose. And when I started to find uh, things to write about relative to leadership, I, it was just, it was trivial to, you know, get a movable type site up and post it up there and starting to, to write about it in a way that, it, um, that, that isn't the tech side. I mean, there's tech there and there's, there's the, the, personalities of being an engineer that are uh, both who I am and what I what I the soup that I'm also in um but you know I I it's not a lot of my leadership stuff will apply to any sort of situation so um and that gets to the piece the second piece of like I got it out there it was easy to get it out there and I got feedback from folks that it was resonating with which I think is really kind of the part of the whole 360 is like hey I have this idea I create a thing I get it out there in the world and then the world tells me positive and negative things about it. And so that just kind of fed on itself. And and I was writing other things at the time early on the blog, but whenever I wrote about leadership, and again, I was calling management and sort of you know other stuff at that point, that was, I always got positive. I always got feedback on it. I always got people like, well, that's interesting. And I think another, I don't think there was a lot of, I don't think still there isn't a lot of, there's a lot more than it was um, kind of content out there that spoke to engineers. Um, ton of books out there. You can go to there, but it was, it didn't really use the language that was familiar to us and sort of the predilections that we have as, you know, engineers wow. as well. So it was also familiar too. So yeah, that was one of the things that was one of the things I loved because um, in those early posts or even in your current writing and the, the books that you brought together being geek and managing humans from some mm -hmm. of the, the first several years of that, yep. the narrative play style of the writing, mm -hmm. like I was in that meeting. I was in yeah. that that space. Yeah. I, I had that conversation. That person was sitting next to me at that point. You know, it was yep. that was all what helped me to connect with it. But it also was what helped me to start applying it myself. Yeah, which it's, was yeah, huge for me it, too. It was a thing I did that I that I learned early on was I think I think it would kind of assume that people knew how to do it because they had the manager hat and they're like, oh yeah, well, you're the manager, so you must know. And like, usually they don't, especially in rapid growth and the brand new managers and, and this sort of thing. So, and so I would, I'd say, I'd say something just in, incredibly stupid. It's in my, I'm like, Hey, we should do one-on-ones on a regular basis so that we're communicating. Right. Like that's like, duh. Right. Like everyone's like, Oh my God, really? We should do that. I'm like, wait, this is, this is news to you. So there was a lot of, um, stating the obvious that I did that I thought was just sort of like came from who I was and how I wanted to be treated as a human and whatnot. But I got a lot of mileage out of the things that I thought were like, hey, you know, like uh, you say something complex and they don't immediately react. 
they probably didn't hear you. You probably didn't say it. So you say, does that make sense? <laughs> I do this a lot. And like, if they don't immediately say, yes, I understand. I'm like, let me try that again. Cause I probably screwed it up because I was talking fast and I was excited about what it was. So like just little things like just error correction, like, Hey, I'm going to put this complex thing out in the world. Is my team actually hearing me? Or are they just kind of like, oh, okay, that guy's rambling about something again. So like these little things are just, they're to me, they're, they're just obvious ways of working with other humans, but documenting, getting them out there, you know, sharing with the world um, was uh, useful. <laughs> yeah. Incredibly useful. Um, I know, one of my career changes happened in 2010. I went to go work for a substantially larger organization than I had been part of before. And I was thinking I was going to go there and they were going to teach me a crap ton about right. JavaScript at scale. Hmm. And instead, when I got there, it was complete disarray. And yeah. just me speaking up and saying, all right, we should maybe we should talk about these things and divvy them up between us so we could get these mm. things done. Let's mm -hmm. prioritize this. That came out of left field like it was radical, but everybody yeah. got on board. And the next yeah. thing I know, instead of being a contract to hire web dev, I'm a tech manager. Yeah. And it just kind of <laughs> rocket shipped from there. It just kept, just You just talk to people like they're humans and then you help them get shit out of yeah. their way and then off you go. Wow. There's, there's, and I, I don't, this sounds judgy. I don't mean it to sound judgy, but I don't think there's any way not to make it. But there's, there's a lot of folks that are kind of, I care deeply about what I do. I, I, I really, I want it to be high quality. I, I try not to be lazy. I try to be thoughtful, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and I love working. I, I love working. Um, like really, I like that sense of productivity. I love the high that building something and getting stuff stuff done with a team of humans does for me. There's other folks and like respect, like they're, they're just kind of there to kind of do the thing and like, cool. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a JavaScript guy. I'm a Java gal, whatever it is. And it's not going through the motions, but the, you shouldn't assume that they have the same motivation as you. And I think there's just a lot of folks that are kind of like, cool as tell me what to do and I'll get it done. Like when I say that, like, like it, like, I don't even, like, it hurts me to even say that because I, want to work with folks who are fired up and, and, but like, there's a lot of folks that are just kind of, they want to like boulder climb. They want to like do other things besides this job thing. And like mad respect for that. That's not me. Um, <laughs> I, um, but I, there's that, those are sometimes the folks on the team where you're just kind of like, cool. Great. So cog in the machine. Really? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. That's awesome. I mean, not what I would do, but that's fine. Yeah. And when you've had your career and you've had, the opportunities to grow like you have mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that you can do mm. when you think of a dream scenario and the dream jobs that you've had in the past what yeah. are some of those things you want to try and pull forward you mean aspects of prior jobs that i want to apply to new jobs is that what you're saying yeah so yeah. well something something you've encountered in the past that a job wouldn't be complete as a dream if it didn't include I um, I, I work at Apple. Have for the last four years. This is my second stint there. Um, one of the things that I, and one of the reasons I came back to that particular company after working at some other great companies, was um, in in my part of the org, there's no product managers, and there's great product managers at Slack and Pinterest. And these are wonderful humans, but the absence of that role, especially when building consumer products, means that 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 role is fulfilled by engineering and design. That means that I am responsible, me, Michael Lopp, and my large team of engineers and quality folks and all that, are, along with our amazing designers, we're, we're responsible for um, the product. And again, I'm not ripping on product managers. If they're there, they do a thing and they do it well. If they're not there, the thing falls to the people, the builders of the thing. And you can, whether you love Apple or hate Apple, I don't think you can argue with the results. Um, there's, there's some things that come out of that that are really powerful. And me as an engineer, as a person who likes to build things and build teams, that's just, that's kind of, that's kind of special. And I'm not saying I'm a great product manager. I don't think I am. I am a person who uses a lot of software, and a lot of technology, and I know what I like. Um, and I know, and I, and I also am willing to argue with other like-minded individuals who disagree with me endlessly until we, we find what the actual truth is. So that's a thing that I've, um, I missed when I was gone, even though there was, 
great product managers at the other companies, but that's a thing. The thing is, it's like when, 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 we were just talking about it. Like you kind of, we've said, we talked about it twice. You kind of, oh, there's managers here. They must know what they're doing. Oh, there's product managers here. They must know what they're doing. Maybe, probably, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. I can guarantee you if they're not there, <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> um, and, um, and someone else has to do that work. And there's real work that a product manager does or whatever you call that role, whether you're another company. Um, I, I just, I, I, I love, I, I love that. I love, and by the way, it's uncomfortable. Some engineers are like, uh, I, I, I write the service and I do it in this way and it's going to scale like crazy. Why are you asking me, how do I feel about this feature? I'm like, cause it's your feature. <laughs> like you're going to use it. What, how do you, how do you like to use it? Right. Um, I, I love that. That's a, I love that, that part of, of my current, of my current company. And if I was going to run off and wave a magic wand and start another company, I, yeah, I probably wouldn't have any product managers and everyone would look at me a little strange and I'd be like, we'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're right. You cannot argue with the results. We're now two weeks from the developer conference uh, um, unveiling of the Vision OS and the Vision Pro. Mm -hmm. I got to tell yep. you, my household of three, we're like, how do we get three of these things as soon as possible? <laughs> now, that yeah. as senior director of engineering, that's not your space, though. So do you want to talk a minute about what your current team's products are? Um. I have what three products talk about. On, the, on the, I have three products on the vision pro. Um, so, um, yeah, we can't really talk about it, but I'm, I'm, this is public knowledge. I'm responsible for messages and for FaceTime for mail and, uh, share play and some other stuff as well. So mm, sound we, important. uh, <laughs> they <laughs> sounds important. Um, anything around communication, um, uh, is going through, through my world. So, um, I, I it, you can look at my background, you know, first time Apple, I was doing the store and then I went, went and did uh, Palantir, which is fun and Pinterest and Slack. I just loved because it was people communicating and getting things done. And, and so when Apple came a calling or it's a long story, but I like everything around communication, like, Oh yeah, this is my jam. People finding different mediums to, to get things done and to, to share stories. Like this is, this is, I'm, I'm in exactly the right role right now. Beautiful. Beautiful. That was one of the things <laughs> I wanted to ask about because in our last conversation, which was um, 2017, and that was podcast episode 34, mm. um, there was a time then when you and Jen were talking about your role as it existed at Slack, and you mm. contributed you attributed that to being a dream job at the time. So totally understanding that being able to go that step beyond and have communication soup to nuts in a way that mm. is, yeah, that, that sounds delicious dream. and wonderful. <laughs> it is. It's, it's hard. It's hard work. It's different work than Slack because it's pure consumer and that's different than Slack, which is enterprise, but it's, uh, I just, I, I, I think, I think one of my core values is communication. Um, <clears throat> how do I convey this idea, whether it's written or a podcast or a tool or whatever that is, it's like, it, there's something joyous when you like take this thing and you're, you know, uh, you and I are both a part of this, this Slack that I, that I run, Rand's leadership Slack. And it's mostly, you know, the other 28,000 people there kind of doing their thing. But if you look at, you, you can see my fingerprints all over it. You can see it in the names of the channels. You can see it in the code of conduct. I'm mostly there to not be there, but to set up sort of a set of rules and values so those 28,000 people can learn from each other. This is the same job I have at Apple with communication. It's totally different, but it's like, cool, how are we going to, how are we going to, how how's this feature going to feel in messages? How are we, what, what does email need to do? Like, these are all, these are all things about figuring out how to get humans to communicate better. I love that. That's my bread and butter. A large part of that must be being intentional about the culture that you're allowed or not just suggesting, but right. really pushing. Yeah. So when you think of the toolkit for that, what do you reach for? It's, um, I, I'm super biased on this question. Um, I, I, I think that writing it down is actually super important. Um, the people need an artifact that they can hold on to. And it's not that it's a written in stone sort of thing, but it's just sort of like, taking it time to kind of think through well, what, a, what should a code of conduct look for a community or what is, what should a, this process work for this team? I, I like to write it down for two reasons. Number one, 
if I write it down, because I'm a writer, it, it gives me a chance to sort of distill through it and sift through the idea and take it from something which is in my head, this sort of like little magical story and turns it into something that's real. And you'd be shocked how often what I'm thinking and what I write are two different things. <laughs> You're like, whoa. I like I pitched you on say hey, I want to do this uh, type of article I'm going to do this this and this you're like oh that's interesting cool and then I write it you're like this is the same thing you're like well you know I I wrote it and so I think that the process of writing um, makes you more thoughtful about your topic but I also think once it's written down and people can look at it and hold it and see it um, it makes it more real um, and that it makes it sort of uh, understandable. And there's a, there's a third part. I said there's two, but there's actually three. And the other thing is, it's you said tool, and it is a tool. I have this artifact. I wrote about this thing, code of conduct, let's say. A, a tool is something that is useful. It's not that I read and it's useful, that it's an ongoing useful. I look at the code of conduct in that community once a, once a day, probably. I'm like, what do we say about this again? And sometimes I'm like, oops, we don't really, we don't really describe what happened in this situation and that's a miss so you know we edit it and we put it in there so it's this living breathing thing but other people are doing that i hope because we like say hey read the code of conduct because it's a big community and strange things happen on the internet <clears throat> it's there as a as a tool for others to refer to and I, and I think that's i think that's important in a world where we have very short attention spans and people are in incredible hurry and you know there it's you know hustle culture and all of that i'm picking the time like well would you like to understand what I think about that? Well, I, I wrote you three pages. Go read that right now. And, and there's no TikTok about it at all. You've got to actually read three pages. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you say that on what I've noticed throughout that community, though, for the, I mean, I've been on there since 2015. I think I was within the first two weeks of people added on. Yeah. And we've added to the people who are active. Hmm. But for the most part, the people who are active has been remarkably consistent. Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's a long tail. There's a core, which I, I'm sure we could go look at the stats and see it. There's a core set of folks that have been there for a while, but there's also this, there's this long tail of sort of onesie twosie folks there. Um, but there's a medium sort of engagement folks. So that, that group is huge and they're not as engaged as like the original thousand or 200, whatever the number is. But they're there, and you can see it when you look at the stats for the sort of message creation. It's just like it's been, it's been like this since the start. It just keeps on going up, um, and that's the part that is uh, one of the parts that's precious to me. Is I I send about fifty to one hundred invites a day every day. Um, it's never. It's, sometimes it's a flood, like when it's on Hacker News or this sort of thing, but. There's just this nice mellow growth to it. So it's not, there's no, we don't have some sort of exit strategy or a monetization strategy or anything like that, obviously, but it's, um, but it is growing. It is healthy. There are new voices and there's just so much going on there. I play this game where I just, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I wonder if there's a channel for blah. And more often than not, I, there is a channel and there's usually like 800 to a thousand people already there. <laughs> And I, I think that's that's uh, as a thing one of the things as the things I've uh, I had an opportunity to influence and build, that one is just paying so much dividends to other people. Wonderful, wonderful. And springing back to dream jobs yeah. now. Yeah. Being able to build this community is clearly among the things you would consider. Mm -hmm. Being able to be at Apple now, um, yeah. working and owning the communications is one. Yeah. Being at Slack prior was another. How many of yeah. your roles throughout your history would you have considered to have been meeting a dream at that point? That's a good question. The thing is, I'm just finishing up the second edition of the second book and your bar changes. So I think I have a, I, everything I've listed, you've just listed is correctly a dream job, but I, I, you know, I think back, I was at Netscape early on. So that was part of that whole wave. Um, I was at Apple right after the first dot-com explosion as we led into the phone, which, you know, Apple was not a healthy thing when I got there and kept on like having these really good quarters and the stock would go down. We're like, what is going on? Um, to watching that sort of turn into that, just be there for that whole acceleration. That was a, that was at the time was a dream job. Hey, where do you work? I work at Apple. Oh my God. That's so cool. I'm like, I didn't tell you what I did. I, I, I could be the guy who cleans the doors, <laughs> you know, but they're like, no, it's amazing. So, um, but I, I don't have the best now, doors. <laughs> they have the best doors. Um, but I, I really, I do. 
I think it's, you want your, one of your last couple of jobs to be your dream job. Otherwise you're probably doing something wrong, but it, I mean, it's for me, for different reasons, Slack, I was, I was running the whole engineering show with Cal Henderson. I loved, I loved that, that accountability. That was really, truly amazing. Um, but being back at uh, Apple, where I'm not running the whole show, I, I have a lot of responsibility. I'm accountable for a lot of people and a lot of stuff, but I'm not like the guy or the gal. Um, but I do love that it's sort of like the parts of engineering that I love, as we talked about in terms of my design responsibility. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't like, I, I I wouldn't say that about Pinterest. I wouldn't say that about Palantir. Great experiences, lots of things that I learned. But the, the last two are, are, are pretty dream jobs. The only problem with Slack was, I know it's all in California and the Silicon Valley. I'm in the way South Bay. It was a, it was a commute. It was an hour and a half each way. <laughs> and I, you know, I don't care how great the job is. It was a lot of work. And in terms of, you know, that whole piece there and that now it's like, it's about, I can, I can ride to work. It takes me like an hour on my bike. Um, I like that too. So work-life balance, right? Yeah. That's an important aspect <laughs> of it. When you think about so even like you're saying, so towards the, the, the tail end of your career, when yeah. you've got more momentum behind you, having not the tail a end number of, my of career. <laughs> further along in your career, not the first, you know, first shots out of the cannon, but further along, um, you want to have some dream aspects yeah. of your job. Yeah. What would you attribute your success for having had mm. this many successful <laughs> dream opportunities thus far? Uh, that's a very carefully constructed question. Um, I, um, I, uh, there's a positive version of this answer and a negative version. The positive version is I have a nose for like, well, what matters to engineers? Um, and that goes all the way back to Netscape. Um, and by the way, there's some super like mistakes between Netscape and now, uh, where I'm like, oh, it hasn't, but I can tell you why each one was interesting to me anyway. But uh, like it was super clear, and actually, even before that, I was at Borland a long time ago. This is about when Windows first landed, but I, I could tell, I could smell, ooh, the engineers they love development tools. So that was Borland, that was Pascal, that was C and C, all the amazing developers. And that's where the first time I saw it in an integrated development environment, it just blew my mind. So that that theme of of uh, being having a nose for the the engineering buzz, which usually translates it often translates into a business positive buzz. That you can look, go look at my career. Uh, Netscape um, after that was a startup, which I did because I wanted to I was everyone was doing startups at that time and I wanted to be a manager. So they're like, cool, let's go do I wanted to go be a director. They did that. Then the world exploded. And and I don't I didn't I'd like I'd love to say I knew Apple was going to totally save it, but I mostly just wanted to be at Apple because it was a place that was buzzy since I was a kid. And it it turned out it was great. And watching Steve do his thing and and be a part of that whole that turnaround. And then uh, Palantir, mostly misunderstood by everybody, but um, this was post 9-11 and I was on a, I was on a mission to be on a, at a mission-driven company where we were trying to allow people to make better decisions with the data they had at their hands. That was a long, and that, but then Pinterest, Pinterest was, and is the strange anomalous sort of like, why, why hasn't Google bought them? Why hasn't, and it's, it's an amazing tool. It's an endless cre set of creative ideas, which is, and has been fascinating to me as a product. And um, so I went there because there was a buzz there. And then Slack was just the brand's Michael Lopp sort of sweet spot of like, I knew the people, they were friends from Flickr. Uh, I loved the product. They were like, oh yeah, you should be the VP of engineering here. I'm like, well, cool. <laughs> Let's make that happen. Um, it, but it was, and it was obvious to me from having sat online and IRC and communicating via command, uh, you know, command line and via the keyword for so long that this is going to be absolutely huge and so much better than sort of more archaic uh, communication methods. So that was there. And then going back to Apple was just, it, it was the perfect, it was a lop shaped job of, of being at Apple, being in the mothership um, and just doing these products that I, I, I use every 90 times a day. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I play this game when I watch TV shows that, kind of, that are filmed in sort of the modern 
in modern art, sci-fi and stuff. And I'm like, I count how long until I see one of my products. That's usually about a minute to five minutes. Because <laughs> at some point they're like, oh, I got a message or here's a call. And it's always Apple stuff. So that's fun. I, I like I like that. I like being relevant. So that's the positive one. What's the negative version of the answer? I am deeply terrified of becoming irrelevant. Deeply terrified. I just corrected you about five minutes ago. I said, not the end of my career. Um, what's going on there? Um, it's just, it's not, it's, I've just watched humans that I care about deeply just let, get their eye off the ball and, and it's fine. You don't want to, you don't want to hustle. You don't want to do this thing. This is fine. You can go, you can do lots of things in life and be happy. That's not me. I, I, I want my work to be relevant. And that means staying on top of everything that's changing around here and being curious about it and insatiable about it. And boy, it's exhausting, but <laughs> it gives you yeah. really good telemetry and intelligence about uh, a signal about sort of like, Hmm, this uh, chat GBD thing seems like a big deal. Oh, it is. <laughs> I'm aware. Um, I've been, I've got it pinned in my browser. I, every time I ask any question of Google right now, I just ask the same question of ChatGPT. I'm like, compare notes and I look at it. And I'm like, why is this different? And I go, well, why? Well, how's this technology built? Okay. I'm going to teach myself about this. I'm happy at Apple. I'm not going anywhere, but I, I care deeply about the technology that we're building, the positives and the negatives. And because I want to stay relevant uh, for as long as I can. So how do you, how do you um, judge when something is worthy of your attention? Because mm. we've got JavaScript yeah. frameworks that flare up and die in, you know, the, the matter of an internet second. Mm. And then yep. we've got technology hardballs that become huge buzzwords for yeah. a hot minute and then fade yeah. away. What are you using to calibrate that? Yeah, it's um, it's a great question. You, I can tell from my network of people and news sources and different mediums that I play around. You can you can tell buzz. Um, and I think I think the the difference from what you're asking about a you know JavaScript framework or this sort of thing, I'm I'm looking for sort of big dents in the universe, big emerging dents in the universe. That's that's the thing that my brain is tuned into. So, you know, blah, 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 JavaScript framework, interesting, blah, blah, blah. But like there's, as you already alluded to, there's, there's 20 of them, there's 50 of them out there. And, you know, it's not that hard. You and I could start doing one tomorrow and we could get some buzz on it. And, it, and I'm not saying I'm not belittling that. It's just the things that I, that I'm, that trigger me, that it, my interest are the things that it's like, oh, well, this is, this is huge. This is gonna. This is gonna change everything. Um, and maybe not. Maybe not. You know that big of a thing. But also, this is entirely unique. I'm thinking Pinterest now, where it's like you're like, and it'd been around a while. They had already had a VP, and they'd been kind of moved, and they were kind of looking for something a little different. I'm like, like what? Why? Why? Why is this so relevant? And you know, I get to see the business numbers, and I can prove to myself that it's a viable thing, and blah blah blah. But it's the magnitude that's 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 intriguing to me. Like most recently, this whole AI ML bit that's going on, that's got captured everyone that AI fever, as I call it. <laughs> I haven't seen one of these in a while. It's been a while. It, you know, Facebook was one, uh, the iPhone was one, the internet was, you know, all of that. It's been a while since we've had sort of this sort of like, whoa, I mean, I guess crypto, but crypto is a big scam. So um, <laughs> sorry, Largely, crypto yeah. folks. <laughs> Um, it's an interesting piece of technology, no doubt, but um, not necessarily a scam. But number one with scammers, <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, interesting technology there, but like didn't intrigue me at all because I just I'm like, like what's that smell? What, what, what? Right. You smell that? There's something wrong here, right? Like I don't know what it is, but I'm I'm, I'm interested in okay, I'll, I'll I'll teach myself about blockchain, but this other stuff kind of seems smells a little scammy to me. So, yeah. And, well, that's the, that's the level of distinction. And so when you think about some of those things that are attempting to be the big dents, so yeah. for a while it was big data, data lakes, then blockchain yeah. came and took their lunch and then crypto took off on its own without right. spending too much time talking about the blockchain. Mm -hmm. 
ML started to actually be useful. And now we're, we're talking about AI and like, it's a completely yeah. different thing when really it's yeah. the first one on steroids. Yep. How do you, when it comes to that relevancy, your attention is important and finite. Right. So going by that buzz, certainly the, the chat GPTs, the LLMs, right. they have the, the, the thing right now. Right. What are you looking forward to for how those are going to start being like daily tools it, it's, that you're not already talk, working on? Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, this is Michael Lopp talking for himself now. Um, the, <clears throat> I want to talk first about the fear part. You didn't ask this, but I, I think it's important because what, what, what accompany, accompanies any sort of like major transition in technology, when I was like, ooh whatever, it passes the LOP test and you're like, oh, this is a big deal. Um, there's two camps. There's camp that's scared of it and there's camp that's intrigued by it. And by the way, I'm I'm sad to say after all my little relevancy TED talk I just gave you here that I was like, I'm like, what's going on here? And I, I fell into the fear camp for a little while going like, um, this seems a little too good to be true. I'm going to pick at it. No, it's true. All right. I'm going to pick it a little more. But no, it's really true. And then you have some of those moments where you like ask it a question. You know, I asked, I asked ChatGPT. I'm like, hey, uh, write the three paragraphs for me that sound like Michael Opp. And it did. <laughs> and it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, all right. Well, that's a good, good training data. Good job there. Um, um, but uh, there was a moment, and then I'll answer your question about what I'm excited about. Um, there was a moment where I was like, I'm like, uh, oh, I'm scared. I'm a little, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm not scared. I'm going to, this is, this is just a tool, another thing to be understood. And I think the, I think it's still early days and I reserve the right to change my answer, but um, I, I'm finding it as a, I'm super sad when someone, I read something, I'm like, oh, I was written by robots because I'm starting to be able to tell, especially chat GPT. There's sort of like this summary mode that it does and you can kind of see the structure of it and how it answers questions or whatnot. And I'm super sad when someone who's not comfortable writing uses it and I can tell in the email, I can tell in the thing. Uh, it just, it has that sort of vanilla tinny quality to it. You're like, hmm, good job robots. Um, but I guess great, good job person who didn't want to write something that wanted to do the minimal viable effort. <sighs> but um, when you turn it around and turn it into a research tool, um, I'm writing this I'm, I'm, I literally today have to finish this last article, for, this last chapter for the book. And it's about offer letters. And it was in the second book and I, I, I revised it. And I've been, I've been using chat GBT as this amazing resource to ask questions. I'm like, Hey, so what's the, what, why would a startup use, uh, options versus RSUs? Um, cause it's all changed how they do compensation in the last, since I wrote that book 10 years ago. And that's been amazing. It is the most researched chapter of a book that I've ever done because I'd go and I'd ask it and then I'd, I'm like, I don't believe that. And I'd say, cite your sources. And so, oh, here's the three articles, here's this Bloomberg article, and this sort of thing. I'm like, oh, okay, great, cool. That sort of uh, intelligence or augmentation or research assistant or or help me jumpstart this thing is super exciting. Um, I, 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 I'm the one that still I'm because I'm not an artist. I mean, I'm a writer, so I guess kind of an artist, but like the one that gets me is when I, when I see like I have a beta of Photoshop and when you say, hey, I you know, have this little picture of my wife and I stretch out the canvas and I say, Hey, fill the rest in with whales and the, and the ocean. <laughs> and it just <laughs> does an amazing job. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> that's just, that's just shocking. And those folks that are such a me that, and it passes my test, my eye test of looking at it and going, oh my God, that's amazing. And maybe because I'm a writer, I can see, I can see uh, the robot writing. Maybe someone who's a Photoshop artist or someone who's more visual thinker than I, maybe they look at that and go like, well, it's obviously fake sand. doesn't look like it to me though. <laughs> um, so that I worry about that side a little bit and how that can be uh, where people are already sort of um, easily um, duped. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier to dupe them. But I also like, I still am a fan. I still am a fan of like, cool, you're going to have to more, think more critically. You're going to have to see through more, which we're not great as a species at doing that. But I, I, I think we're going to have extra motivation. I hope we're on. Yeah, I hope so too. And the, <laughs> the issue, I'm not super worried about being, a, being able to recognize when something was bot written. Right. What I'm looking, not looking forward to, but see in the, the, the distance is being asked to prove that something you did isn't bot written 
Yeah. And not having a lot of places to go from, you know, the, the old joke, you know, I can tell this sure. was shopped because I can tell from the pixels and there's not yeah. going to be a lot of those markers going forward. Yeah. Well, I agree with you, but I think, I think we humans are, are pretty protective of, I hope we are, I'm an optimist, but I, when I go down that path that you just said, I, I imagine there's going to be a world and this is good from a source uh, fact checking perspective where um, it's going to be required. And I have no idea to, how to do this, but this is a startup I wanted to do since for the last 10 years, since FaceTime showed up, Facebook, FaceTime, since Facebook showed up, well, I'm like, well, <laughs> this is obviously a lie. I can, I know it's a lie. Someone just constructed this to make this group of people mad. Um, I know how to do that, um, but I, they're basing it on zero facts. So I want the facts. So what is, what is the truth? Um, and this is a whole slippery slope and I understand the truth is subjective. And blah, 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 blah. Um, but um, at some point, and this could go right back to our blockchain thing. And so there's this point where you say, here is a well-defined unique piece of LOP writing certified. Um, and that's the piece is there, right? And, and there's some way for you as a human who's interested in going like, is this really LOP? You can actually see that and then you can figure that. And I, again, I do not know how to do this from a technology perspective, but I believe people are going to be more and more, I hope, are going to be more and more concerned about the, the where did this information come from? Where did this image come? How was this constructed? And we get to ask and it's it's on the burdens on someone to say, cool, yeah, here's here's the certification or here's the thing. I. I hope that's the case. Um, I do know that people are lazy <laughs> and are going to be like, oh, I, this is easy to hate. I'm just going to hate it. Sounds good. I'm in. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm laughing about that. <laughs> yeah, there are some that's things true. you can count on. <laughs> yes, so I hope. Let, let's shift focus. Now, yep. you had mentioned in there about, so we had talked about how there are these things that you look for for understanding what the big dents are going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also how you set your barometer for how fearful to be about different things. Yep. When it comes to care and feeding of your teams, mm -hmm. how are you helping to guide them through this tumult and the right. the times, you know, I was talking with Jen about this, that the the current marketplace in the tech community really hasn't looked like this since maybe 2008. So yep. you've got people who've got 10, 15 years of experience under their belts, and then they're like, what the hell is this? And right. folks who have been around since the early aughts and late 90s are like, oh, you right. sweet summer children. How are you <laughs> helping to guide your people to make sure that when they're working with you, for you, that it yeah. is a dream job for them? And also, when they want to set their sights elsewhere, they understand what that means. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm in this Apple bubble. I'm completely aware of what's going on. Um, I, and, and to the point of you, you will notice during the two times the, the there was a bad one in 2000, 2000, remember that was super bad. Uh, there was one in 2008 that was pretty bad as well. And then so this one I would put in somewhere between those two, I don't know, maybe worse. Uh, where was Michael Lopp doing all three of those? Oh, I was an apple. <laughs> so <laughs> all three, <laughs> Uh, a little like the, and you, that you know, what not lucky just sort of like hey this is a good place to be when you know the sky falls um maybe lucky maybe a little lucky so um i will answer your question but uh i'm in this i'm in this uh world where we are well known for being very conservative about hiring and we are we are a profitable company and i won't say any more anything about apple but like i i i what other companies are going through, and this is public knowledge, we are not going through as much. Let me answer your other question. I can not be uncomfortable <laughs> answering um, <laughs> it. The, how to make sure it's their dream job. I have this manager who was working for me a couple of years ago. And he was doing okay. Kind of a B, B minus. Good guy, smart guy, had empathy, values aligned with me. But just like kind of phoning it in, you know, good team. Like nothing, nothing I can be like, oh, hey, whoa, slow down there. It was just like, I was like, you know, the, 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 the trite way this guy's got hunger. Come on, I'm not hungry. And um, I remember the moment he, uh, he, this is pandemic times. Um, he uh, WebEx me and he's like, oh. and I, I'm going to be deliberately vague here. He's like, hey, uh, there's this thing going on. It's this. 
I'm like, yeah, I heard about that. That's a big deal. He's like, I'm in. I wanted to like tell me how blah, 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 blah. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, what can I do here? Blah, blah. Like, I'm like, and by the way, it wasn't like a earth shattering program. It was, I was aware of it. I didn't like think he was that interested in it or whatnot. Well, let me tell you. I am like, I'm like, I'm like, well, this is interesting. I've never seen this fire before. I said, well, and I, I so my I took what was a B program from a relevancy bottom line perspective, and I just shined it up to an A. And I said, hey, I need you to drive this piece here. This is our thing. This is the thing I want to. This isn't, I wasn't lying. I wasn't like, I wasn't being duplicitous or anything, but I was just like, this is the first time I've seen this. I'm having lots of move to see this person so engaged in this program. And I said, big time. And by the way, I started putting contingencies on. I'm like, well, if you want to do this, these are the other three things I need to see so that we can clear the area to do this sort of thing. Those things were done by Friday. <laughs> like, and I was like, I'm like, and there was two more that he identified when he got through them because I knew he had the ability to do it. So it's a really long way of answering your question, which is it's a dream job when the, when the work in front of the person is something they really just care about. And by the way, I'm not saying like it's always like the work, it's just the best days of our lives and we're always working on the things that we only care about. That's not what I'm saying. But there's got to be part of the, the portfolio it has to include that thing that they're just fired up to do. Like, and they they're just, they get natural energy out of like that sort of thing. And until, and that was the problem with this guy. And by the way, it's been perfect since then. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's gotten huger and he made it even bigger and da, 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 da. But that's the thing I'm always looking for with my team is like, What's the, what's the thing that really just fires you up? And it's not always obvious. Sometimes it's people just love doing the hiring bit, or there's some folks that are just like, they're just like the promo people. They're like, okay, I got to get my team promo in the next five years. Here's my plan for every single burn day by day. That's exaggeration, but like, it, you don't know. But that's once you identify that, you know how to feed that and take care of that. And the other things just follow along because they're like, that's the thing. Now, if it's something wild, sometimes it's not working at all. They're like, I really just want to see the world and travel the world. It's like, oh, okay, well, let's, you know, uh, <laughs> I can't give you more vacation. So, um, but that's, that's the, the maps thing. team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, it, it's, just, it's just finding that thing that motivates the folks um, and, you know, caring for it once it's there. Nice. When you look at the, the future and are able to align what are your priorities, what are the yep. business priorities and their missions with other people's missions. Yeah, that, yep. that's rocket fuel. Yeah. When you're thinking about your next, what would have to happen rather? Yeah, let me rephrase that. Mm -hmm. What would have to be in an offer or an opportunity for you to take your eyes off of what's your current amazing opportunity? Um, it, it is a slight, I'm going to twist your question a little bit. Um, if you go look at my LinkedIn, you'll see that I, I switch jobs about every three to four years, kind of like clockwork, uh, other than Apple where um, I was there for eight, but if you look at it, I, I switched jobs about three or four years in. Um, this is this is different than what you were asking, but it's relevant to the question. Um, I... Um, I am a stimulus driven creature. If I go to Las Vegas, I play poker. Why do I play poker? Um, because poker is people watching with money. <laughs> it's so much fun to like sit there and these are all strangers and I'm sitting down here with my little pile of chips. And I'm like, hmm, this is a most interesting meeting I'm going to be in today. And I sit there for three hours and I figure out everything that's going on. It's like this distilled Loppian sort of like crucible. It's like my, my jam. I love it. Uh, perhaps is also different, but it's also stimulus. But what I have found for me is that there's a, there's a life cycle, there's a half-life to, uh, to how me figuring a thing out, including a poker table, by the way, where I'm like, hmm, okay, this is this, this is this person here, this, blah, blah, blah. all right, I don't know what that is. And like, and somewhere between three and four years, I'm like, all right, I know this workflow now. And, um, my, my shields go down and I start to, uh, I start to go like, Hmm. So, uh, the question is what will attract my attention at that point? Um, it, it, we've already talked about it. It is, it is that sort of that, that, that dentness of the thing, um, that is like, is this a significant dent in the universe that we're doing? We're there. This team is working on here. And by the way, it doesn't need to actually be a dent yet, but it can be, um, 
I can believe that it can be a dent. Like no one knew what Palantir was. And let me tell you, I had a lot of Apple friends. So you're going where like Lord of the Rings, what? And they know about it now uh, um, for better or worse. So, um, but that it's, it's that, it's that interest we were talking about earlier, that sort of like relevance piece that's there. So uh, I'm, I'm very happy at Apple. I'm not going anywhere, but uh, if I wasn't at Apple, the, it, we've already said this, I would be anything AI ML related. I'd be like, this is intriguing. I'm, I'm, I probably spend a half hour to hour every day installing something or testing out something and kind of just continuing to kind of explore that with myself, teach myself. Yeah. And so as when you have sort of a, an objective, a, a dream mm -hmm. that's not just necessarily a working at a specific company, but something you right. want to accomplish. So much like your magical bookshelf behind you there. <laughs> Um, I, I was lucky enough to watch you posting about that as it was coming yep. to be coming to fruition. When you have a dream like goal like that, at what point do you mentally shift between, okay, this is done. What's next? Mm. Yeah. I think your question is, well, this isn't your question, but let me answer what is related to it. Maybe I have it is to my have question. a, it is your question. I mean, maybe, maybe it is <laughs> the, I have to have something going on always. So bookshelves that was going on for six months or so right now, there's a project going on outside with their hardscapers are working on a hill and putting in a thing. I'm doing nothing except uh, this kind of going, uh, this is kind of what I want to happen. And these folks were uh, amazing moving these huge rocks around on a hill. Um, I, I think I at least, I'm not sure what the, the N is, but I, it might be one, but it might be like three. Um, I have to have one of those things going. And this is on top of having a full-time job at Apple and running on teams and blah, 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 blah. I have to have these other things which are sort of like going. And uh, you're, <laughs> if they're all done, shelves are done, outside's done, you just watch. <laughs> My wife knows. She can tell. She's like, oh, you're looking for the thing. Because I will like authorize, hey, by the way, we really wanted to redo the kitchen, right? Didn't we? She's like, just because you're looking for a thing right now I mean, doesn't mean I am signed up to redoing the kitchen, Mr. Lot. Slow your roll. Um, but I have to have those things going on. And they have to have tickled something in my brain. Like these bookshelves were a thing I was thinking about for a decade. And I don't think I had anything. It was sort of towards the end of the it was in the middle of the pandemic. We had just finished um, a remodel of the the master. And I was just like, yeah, I didn't have anything going on. And I was like, you know, we have this interior designer and don't talk with her. And she's like, oh, no, this is the guy. And I'm like, great. But like, there wasn't this like momentous like occasion where the fireworks went off. I was probably sitting in this chair right here kind of going like, project, <laughs> project here. <laughs> so I have those things going on because it's, and that's bookshelves, that's books, that's travel. I'm doing a talk in Switzerland in a week and I'm doing magic tricks. I'm not a magician. Um, so like, I always have something like that to kind of, you know, keep my brain just kind of processing. It's, it's bigger than processing, but it's stimulation. Excellent. Yeah, that actually is getting to, to what I was asking about. Now, I've noticed that myself personally and teams in organizations and organizations at the macro, if there isn't an obvious goal that you're all charging toward, the steam kind of just flies off into the ether and yep. things grind to a halt. And then yep. you need to restart the whole machine once yep. you've repointed it. And for some, um, like yourself and Jen's exactly the same way when she was teaching and she had summers off, it was the worst thing ever yep. um, because suddenly everything had to be done right away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in order to keep her brain going. Um, yep. So being able to notice where you are on that trajectory of, I have this cool thing I want to see happen. Okay, we're making progress. Okay, yeah. we're almost done. Okay, it's yep. done. At what point in that part or, or that arc is it like, all right, I got to spool up what's next? Yeah. I don't, that's what I was I getting to there. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's, here's the thing. Wake up at 3 a.m. Because I do. <clears throat> if I wake up at 3 a.m. 
this sounds like it's misery. It's not. <laughs> if I wake up at 3 a.m., I what is the first thing I start thinking about? It, it can be work. It, it very often is work. You know, there, there's always something going on there. But I wake up and I don't have that other thing that I'm working on, whether that's the article I'm writing right now or the book show, or this sort of thing. That's when I know that sort of the the well is is either close to empty or is empty. Um, that's that's kind of my check. And I, I it, it's not a there's no flow chart. There's no list of things. It's just there's this sort of a mental emptiness that I'm aware of. And by the way, I like watching TV. I, I, I don't, I'm not like go, go, go type A person. Like I rode my bike today. After this, I'm going to go pop on the couch and rewatch part of How I Met Your Mother. Like an hour. And by the way, I have a lot to do. <laughs> I don't kind of talk to do. I've got magic tricks to learn, all this sort of thing. It's not, it's, but there's, there's a, when my brain is aware that I don't have that, that project, that, that stimulus, that thing that I can do, then I will, I will in, invent something, <laughs> but it's not a, it's not a, it's not a necessarily really clear delineation in my head. Cool. Cool. Well, when you think about what is next, either yeah. from a project or yeah, yeah. the next next book or the next next talk or the next next housing thing or the next next work <laughs> thing what are tickling you right now in addition to the chat gpt stuff yeah um i it always this book i'm, I'm doing a second it actually is someone in the rand's leadership community like two years ago said hey what what what, what happened with being geek and i'm like oh, i didn't like the book that much and they're like it was really good i'm like no it wasn't um, and then I read it. I'm like, no, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> and it was actually pretty good. <laughs> it was no, I I, re, I just reread the whole thing and I I nuked two chapters. I added eight. I edited everything, um, and it was really good. It, like there was like two chapters that I'm like, wow, this is wow. I I wrote this. This is amazing. Anyway, <laughs> um, the um, normally when you get done with the book, it's very strange. Normally when you get done with a book. Uh, you're like, I don't want to, I don't want to see a word. I don't want to think about writing. I am so tired of my voice in my head writing stuff. And I am 180 degrees on that. I'm actually like working on, I'm working on three concepts around books right now. One of them is uh, just sort of this, more of the same sort of this sort of leadership advice bit. And that's, if I had a, if I were a betting man and I am, I guess that's probably the one that would probably show up. I've already written a couple of the chapters. Um, so that's very likely, but there's two other ones that I, 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 to the point of wanting to learn something new and to experience new things. I, I, I really think something important happened with Facebook in that it sort of changed the landscape of how we as humans, and I'm not on Facebook anymore. I haven't been on in years, but it just sort of changed the whole dynamic. And I, there's endless research papers on this, and this is, there's presidential elections and blah, 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 blah. Uh, you can go on it. I think there's an interesting book to be written, maybe maybe in a fictional way, about sort of how this technology that we depend on uh, kind of broke things. Um, and I don't want to. This is not a like you know this is snake oil or anything. Because or but it's to me it's there's some interesting things as a person who observes humans and how we treat each other and how we work with each other, how some of the choices made by our peers in terms of building stuff. Like oh you did you weren't even thinking you didn't even think about this or or you, you maybe you couldn't even imagine it because it never existed before but like this is the consequence of that and you just were going to go fast and build things so there's something there and by the way I'm not just going to rip on Facebook or it goes back to Netscape and there's this there's these qualities of these companies and these people who uh, many I consider friends that I, I think is an interesting thing to write about and more intriguing to me is to find maybe find a way to do it in a not pointing the finger way but just in a kind of a ranzy and sort of like hey and there's this here's this hypothetical here's this fictional story about this thing here that could be fun as well the other one that is this sounds like i want to like not work anymore but there's a channel on um on our, the rand's leadership site called the pro leisure circuit and um it let's let's check right now uh do 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 how many people are here PLC, Pro Leisure Circuit. Um, let's see, there's 483 people there. Uh, this is a joke between a friend and I. And he, he was, before I was leaving um, uh, Slack, he's like, well, I was talking about leaving Slack. He's like, well, so you're gonna go on the Pro Leisure Circuit? I'm like, what is that? He's like, you know, 
just, you know, it's the professional way of, you know, chilling. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. <laughs> Cause it's like, I don't ever want to retire as we talked about. I love working and stuff, <laughs> but the idea of weaponizing it and productizing it as this pro leisure circuit is really intriguing to me. And if you go in this channel, it's got this life of its own. And it's like people who are taking a week off are like, I'm on the pro leisure, pro leisure secret this week. And it's sort of like this permission to kind of relax and to, to chill. And if you if you watch me in there and I'm like working full time, I'm in there. If someone's in there like trying to manage it or like say, hey, I'm trying to plan my week. I'm like, why are you planning? <laughs> like you're missing the point completely. And I, I it just tickles my fancy to think about a pro leisure circuit book as a as a antidote for all this lovely work that we like doing and to give people sort of a permission to like, just chill the F out, you know, really do nothing whatsoever. <laughs> maybe that's like a chapter and not a book, but I feel like there's a book there as well. So maybe, I, maybe more of a pamphlet. <laughs> no, I, I think there's a whole ass book there. And the reason I think yeah. that is because a lot of what we're talking about, and it's a lot of what Jen and I get to talk about with a lot of our yeah, clients, yeah. we talk about having permission slips for them too, for yeah. doing the things that are regenerative, that are just for them. Yeah. We don't, in the natural course of work, think about that. Yeah. And if you're not actively engaged in a vocation, there must right. be something wrong with you. But having the pro leisure circuit yeah. is... <laughs> I am intentionally taking time yeah. for me. I yeah. am intentionally doing this and yeah. it does, it does give people permission yeah. to chill the F out, to, to yeah. focus on themselves for a time. Yep. One of the things that I note with folks is that, you know, we've spent a lot of time today, thankfully talking about dreams and dream jobs. And when I'm talking about people with people about their dreams in the future text context, mm -hmm. which you and I'll get to in a moment, folks have a hard time with that, especially folks in tech, because so much of our professional lives, we're trying to scope things down to fit into the next sprint, right, right, scope right. things down to fit into somebody else's vision, help, you know, you, you want to have a fruitless argument for 45 minutes, stand up in the middle of a cube farm and say, what's everybody <laughs> want for lunch? <laughs> and you're going to immediately start adapting what you say for the other people who are piping up that they're in. So-and-so is right. joining, well, they're vegan, so we can't go to this other place. So-and-so is joining, well, they're lactose intolerant, so we're not going to that one. We're going over here. And people do that to every aspect of their lives unconscious, unconsciously yep. if they're not careful. So when you yep. have to be intentional about your well-being, you need that permission slip. Yep, totally. Yeah, so I, think I think you it's... got a whole book there. I think I, I think I do too. I, I think I need to, I think I need to scribble it out. And I, I, I here's the thing. I wonder if I have to go on pro leisure circuit to do it. And I, as we said at the beginning or at several times, I'm super happy with what I'm doing, but I think some research might be necessary. <laughs> I'm sure Apple can understand how to spell sabbatical <laughs> yeah. long enough for we, you to go and do that. And, and we, still we have. don't have sabbaticals. Those, those left long ago when Steve came back, because what we learned, uh, I am told, um, was people <laughs> go on sabbatical for six months, come back and quit. <laughs> so he was like, come on, if they're not coming back, if they can't reach it. You know, it's not recharging. Then why are we doing this? So uh, I am right. told that that is, that is officially gossip. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> That's the scuttlebutt. <laughs> so when we take the long view and we future pace, what is in your long view version of what it means to be yep. the, the most badass lop you can be, what is in that dream? I know it's not it, moving to Hawaii. <laughs> Hawaii uh, is a good place to go for, I, I, I grew, I lived there for quite some time. Um, <laughs> it's a, uh, um, I, I just wrote this piece that I just published today. Um, and the final line was, my job is to make sure that you don't need me. And I don't know if I'd say that back at Netscape when I was figuring out how to be a leader and whatnot. But m my long view is that I have built up my team and people so that they really don't need me. And that's not because I don't think I have stuff to do. There's always stuff for me to do and whatnot. But number one is just like I have, I have achieved a... Um, 
So uh, here's a different version of it. The reason I write everything down as we already talked about is so that you don't actually need to talk to me. And I, because, and by the way, uh, I mean, it's lovely to talk with you. This is, I like talking about this stuff. Um, but I want to have captured it all so that you can go buy, grab, buy, grab the five books or listen to the podcast or wherever it is and learn these things in your own way and adapt it to how you need to do these sorts of things. And in my head, there's some unachievable, like you've got it all, <laughs> you've written it all down, you've captured in whatever means that you can do that. And I'm not, I'm much better than I was 20 years ago. And it, um, But I think there's a bunch more to actually get out there that is sort of like uh, getting getting that all there. And um, that's one of the long views there. And that's why I like to keep writing because there's always more to say, even though some of the chapters are often regurgitations of something that I didn't really think that well. I didn't think about that well in the first book. That's one thing. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't ask because I don't know. Um, I, I do know that there's a startup in me and that could be a Ranzian consulting thing. I'm more comfortable than I was this, this year than I was, you know, five years ago. Cause I always worry about being relevant as we've talked about. So there, there might, there might be a weaponization of not weaponization, but an opera repolarization of Rand's that is, um, um, much bigger than the Rand's leadership slack which is 28,000 people. What are you talking about there? Um, I do truly believe that people learn better from each other in person. Uh, I know that distributed here is forever and they can totally work. It's working right now. Um, but I, I do, I do imagine um, perhaps being a pro leisure circuit time, uh, getting everyone together, uh, this group, these people that you and I know, um, plus some, some folks that are just hiding that are there right now that are going to be absolute gems. When we just give them the microphone and say, Hey, we think you can talk about one-on-ones. Go. Um, I think that's another thing there. And not from a the Rand's leadership Slack makes no money. Um, it's on the, it's on the good graces of Slack. Thank you, Slack. And this one, we I don't, I'm not interested in uh, making piles of money or anything. I'm interested in, people hanging out and learning from each other because that's how you do the learning. And uh, I think there's something there. I, I've been debating this with Mrs. Rands for half a decade at some point doing this. So um, that's another thing I think it'd be interesting to see how that would work. Um, um, and then there's this traveling. I want to do more of that. Um, Mrs. Rand loves to do that. She's just landed in Italy earlier today. I'm joining her at the end of the week. Um, so Wonderful. <laughs> that's another piece there so see the world but you'll notice that it's all stimulus it's all interesting mm -hmm. things to build and see <laughs> what's your favorite part of italy so far um i am a lake person i'm a northern italy person so um uh, my, my wife is fluent in italian so when we go there we i just grab her uh, waist and we wander around and she just yammers to this nice old lady in the corner and we say hey what should we eat tonight and she's like and she's they're just they love her <laughs> they just love her because she's very american and, and she's like, blah, blah, blah. and they're like oh go down two streets take a left you'll see this rooster on a door go in there amazing food we're like great yes. we go down there it's like you would in your travel dreams you have never gone down this alley you get to the door it doesn't look like a restaurant you see the rooster you're like we're gonna go for it. you open it up it's four tables it's a local place and they're and my wife's there like i that makes that makes makes for northern italy for me is that whole vibe there what about you um, so far, so my favorite place is being in Positano. Uh, mm. There's a specific cafe there mm. that serves wonderful limoncello when it's time for <laughs> limoncello. Um, but other than that, they have it has a view of the ocean and it has wonderful coffee and it yeah. has great Wi-Fi. So Ooh. you can sit there. <laughs> you can sit there with your laptop and get a little bit of work done, a little bit of a little bit of whatever's on your heart out into onto mm. the bits. That's and stare awesome. at the ocean, drinking coffee with great <laughs> Wi-Fi. That sounds but lovely. Other than that, though, um, we're uh, our last trip there. We were near a tiny town called Lichignano, which is a little castle town. It's um, near the border with Umbria. Mm. Um, it's a uh, south of Florence. Yeah, you've got to drive an hour north to a town and then take a half an hour train to get to Florence. Right. Um, which was a lovely trip. We, uh, um, for a, we'll do that anytime. 
we uh first vax first dosage maybe first no for the first we got two right you know two to be like uh, you know for whatever pfizer was um we were as soon as that like we hit that window we were out of here and we had to test on the way out we had to test on the way in but we went to a, a little little castle town um just south of florence and just it was it was everyone was still freaked out but and it was you know obviously there was a lot more that happened after that but we, we were just so done with being in the house for so long um the moment that they opted literally like the month that like it got easy that easier to do we were like bye we'll see you later in there um it was we did not like being cooped up at all we were traveling quite a bit and i, I came up talking to friends who were like oh yeah it's the first time i've been in an airplane like i talked to him like last week i'm like i think i've been on like 20 airplanes <laughs> since the pandemic because we were just we 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 are uh, stimulus driven creatures which i think is the title of this podcast now <laughs> there you go stimulus driven creatures <laughs> so after italy because i love mm -hmm. talking about travel and people's yeah. dreams and people's visions after yeah. italy what would be the short list for next stops places oh um oh gosh uh, there's so many um well um, I'm New York always, New York and DC always. My the daughters in DC. That those are those are freebie trips, uh, and that's not what you're asking. Um, I love. We have dear friends in Ireland. Uh, Ireland is second home to us. That's another kind of just go there whenever and do that sort of thing. But like novel new places. Uh, this place we're going. We're going. To, I'm flying into Milan, um, and then we're taking a train up to some place in the middle of Switzerland for this conference called the next this next thing or something like that um I've never been to switzerland i'm gonna gonna be on this train on, on one of these historic trains driving up there that sort of thing that's gonna that's been on the list for a while my family's from austria um and we haven't really done that that's another thing you know probably on the pro leisure circuit that'll it's never been a reason to go there most of my travel is because i'm speaking there so seen a lot of the world because of that um but never have gotten to austria before i want to do that um uh there's a there's a, a big huge South Island, New Zealand trip. Um, I've been on the North Island many many times because there was a great conference there called Webstock. That South Island, uh, you you can't go do it for a weekend. You got to get down there like three weeks. So that's on the list there. Um, uh, I, I I know there's something in Indonesia, Thailand, something there. I haven't figured out that trip yet, but that's just that whole box, that whole area down there is. I'm a surfer. So, um, you know, that's a less place to go at some point. So, you know, it's, uh, gotta have first have the time. That's like, that's, that's job. Number one is because <laughs> right now it's like this trip is happening that we're going to is cause I'm speaking there, um, which is great. Yay. W work and pleasure. Um, but, uh, I think the pro leisure organs are a requirement to kind of actually check the, the vacation box. Interesting. Yep. Pro leisure circuits required to check the travel box, vacation it's, box. Yeah, it's it's a the I, I like working and uh, we're all back and Apple is very strong on us being there. Um, we yeah, you can do a, you can do four weeks, three weeks remote. Well, so I can say, hey, I'm going to be in Australia and you can work there. That Australia would be a horrible idea because of the timing, but. Um, it's the, the 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 travel box that I'm talking about is really having that flexibility. Both my kids are launched. One of them is in tech, and the other one's in her senior year in DC. So that was kind of one. That box is now checked, and then there's truly having the time to do it. Because right now it's sort of jamming it in between OS releases and this sort of thing. And I'm not complaining. Like my life is practically perfect. But I think the the that travel like having the time like cool like sweet we only got three months here let's let's get four trips in what do you say honey <laughs> sounds great yep cool well I'm ready to wrap this up did you have okay. anything else you'd like to speak on um no I think we're good I think we I think we found some threads and tied them together and untied them and retied them so yeah I think it was good yeah. 
So we're with Michael Lopp here, author of Being Geek, Managing Humans, Software Developers Career Handbook, and The Art mm -hmm. of Leadership. Yep. And currently Senior Director of Engineering at Apple. Yes, Where can you also be found? So when you want people to find you, there's rensinrepose.com. <laughs> Anything else that you'd like to direct them to? Uh, we talked about the RANS Leadership Slack. Just type that in and you'll see how to join. The, the requirement uh, for joining is, do you know how to work email? If you do know how to work email, then you'll get in. Uh, everyone thinks it's like a hard thing to do. It's, nope, but it's not a robot. That's me. If you send sending in the, when you fill out the forum, send it to me, you'll get that. Um, and then, you know, I'm on the Mastodons. I'm still on Twitter. That's for that sort of thing. Um, but I'm easily findable. You know? <laughs> Just yeah, type in it, the words and you'll find me. <laughs> Excellent. Well, it was excellent talking to you, Michael. Thank yeah. you for, for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you again in another 200 episodes. Excellent. Cool. Beep.